Well, let's find out what is happening in the world of technology. Let's bring in uh, my colleague and correspondent, Sahil Manikdala. Sahil, over to you. Uh, thank you, Archit. And today, uh, there's only one big tech news that uh, matters. Samsung's 2017 flagship smartphones, uh, the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, have finally been unveiled at the company's massive launch event in New York City. But the launch takes under uh, unusual circumstances for Samsung. The company is still recovering after exploding Galaxy Note 7 phones that damaged Samsung's brand last fall. Samsung is also facing a growing competition, both from the high end of the market, especially Google's Pixel phone, and from dirt cheap Chinese phone makers. So the launch of the S8 and S8 Plus is a fairly high stakes moment for Samsung. Now we are yet to get our hands uh, on the phone and we will of course get you a full review. But from the specs alone, the Galaxy S8 doesn't look more than just a successor with incremental upgrades. There's also no word on when the phone will hit the Indian markets, but in the US pre-orders for the phone begin on March 30th with the shipping starting on April 21st. Now to talk uh, more on this uh, we are joined by our tech correspondent uh, Ankit Tudeja in the studio. Ankit, you know big day for Samsung of course but has the Galaxy S8 ticked all the boxes? Sail, so you have to understand to the mobile the smartphone market has reached a saturation point and you just asked me about the does it tick all the boxes and the only thing that came to my mind was does it have all the incremental upgrades? We have very low expectations from the smartphone market today. And talking about the tick boxes, talking about the incremental upgrades, as I talked about, yeah, the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus come with all the incremental upgrades it should be having. So in that way, yes, I, I, of course, we look forward to such launches with all the enthusiasm. But yeah, at the end of the day, over the years, the companies are only disappointing us. Be it iPhone 7 for that matter, or S8 or S8 Plus, the companies are only leaving us disappointed. Right, uh, but Ankit, how does this fare with, let's say, something like the iPhone 7 or uh, Google Pixel's phone? Sahil, uh, I'd like to talk to you from the consumer point of view and not the technology point of view first. So when you talk from the consumer point of view, consumers are already uh, only interested in the experience. So when you talk about the experience, it's about how useful, how simplified the device is. So if you talk about the iPhone 7, Google Pixel, or Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus for that matter, all these phones are high-end phones, and of course, they offer a good experience, no doubts about that. But from the innovation point of view, from the technology point of view, these phones have been disappointing us over the years. When you talk about the iPhone 7, when the uh, iPhone 7, yeah, when the first iPhone 7 came in 2007, it was a huge upgrade. We were using BlackBerry phones before that. So it was a revolutionary move from BlackBerry to iPhone 7. Then we saw companies that companies were uh, making revolution. They, the phones were getting bigger, they were getting thinner, the companies were powering the phones with more battery. And every year there was some right. revolution happening on the smartphone front. But over the last few years, the smartphone market has reached a saturation point, And the only thing we're getting is incremental upgrades. So when you talk about the comparison with iPhone 7 or Google Pixel, in terms of experience, they are more or less the same. But from the technology point of view, someone gets one score more than the other. So it's just 19 and 20, not like 10 or 20 for that matter. So how big of a deal is this uh, for Samsung? I mean, what exactly is stake at here for the company, especially you know, considering that uh, Note 7 fiasco? You can say it's a make or break situation for this company right now. So last year when Samsung introduced Note 7, the, comp the phone was exploding, it was catching fire, it was self-combusting for that matter. So the company had to recall the devices in less than two months, and it was a huge blow to the credibility and the reputation of the company. Not only that, it cost company billions of dollars in loss. Right. So in just two months, it happened. Ever since then, Samsung has been taking steps like carefully, and also the vice chairman was also arrested and inducted of bribery. So the, there have been unfortunate events over the last few months for the company. And this was the event that people were looking forward to, S8. Now the phone has come out. We have to see how the phone performs in the real world. The company has bragged a lot, has showed off what all it comes with. But when we talk about the reviews, when we talk about the real world test, we are yet to get those. So yeah, only maybe in a couple of weeks from now, we can get a right. clear opinion on how the phones are going to be. Are they going to explode as well or not? Right, Ankit, you just said that you know they're taking some steps. Samsung is taking some steps to you know uh, make safer batteries. But what exactly, what sort of steps have they taken uh, with the new S8? Have they mentioned anything of this about in the launch at all? So when the Note 7 fiasco happened, the company came up with a statement that it was because of the faulty batteries. The Note 7 was was a huge blow to the company's reputation so much that even airplanes banned the phone on the right, planes. Yeah. So yeah, so. 
if you have you have to understand that the company it was the problem the faulty battery was the problem in the note 7 now the asset has come we wish we hope that there wasn't any such problem in the phone as note 7 faced but you never know it could be if if not faulty batteries it could be something else so let the phones come out let the let reviewers get review the device and then maybe we can have a final word on that so you're saying that uh, this phone won't actually uh, explode in my hands if i buy it i wish it exploded in sales only <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me just ask you also, you know, when can we expect uh, this phone to uh, launch in India? There's no word on it officially by Samsung. And also, what sort of price range are we looking at? So as we know, the event happened in New York. Uh, the phone will go on sale in New York in the U.S. Uh, from April 21. The pre-registrations right. for the phone will begin from March 30th. But when it comes to the Indian market, there is no word as to when the new S8 or S8 Plus will hit the Indian shelves. But yeah, I mean, we can expect in a few weeks from now. Maybe. So what was the one thing that stood out for you uh, with the S8 or the S8 Plus? Like what was that one key feature that said, okay, you know what, Samsung might just bounce back? I would not say stood out, but I would say something that caught my attention was the display. Right. Because the display, as the company calls, infinity display. It has a curved yeah. screen, and if you take a look at it, it looks like that there is no bezel. It's a bezel-less screen. While well, the company is calling it infinity display, but it's right. again, it's a gimmicky term for that. Mm -hmm. So. It's not, it, no feature stood out. There was no revolutionary feature. There wasn't any path breaking innovation in the S8 or S8 Plus. But I think display is what that catches my attention. All right, what about that invisible home button? How exactly does that work? Because there were rumors that would, they'd you know, totally get rid of the home button at all. But now they've come up with this invisible home button. But you know, I was watching the event and I still wasn't very clear how exactly does it work? I mean, what's so unique about it? Sahil, I'm really glad you asked that question as I was just about to talk about it. So the companies, are now just, I mean, they are just working around gimmicks now because there is nothing else for them to show off in terms of innovation. So the only thing they are doing is they're working around gimmicks now. So in, in, during the event, if you had noticed, they said it's an invisible home button. It's not an invisible home button. It's just they're done away with the physical home button. But now it's a software button, as we see in most of the Android phones. So it's, again, a gimmick to catch attention because there's nothing else for them to catch attention. Right. So yeah, it's just they have done away with the physical home button, but yeah, the software home button of course exists there. And uh, what about you know that uh, Bixby uh, new voice assistant? Will it give Siri a run for its money? It depends. Will it give Apple Siri or for that matter Google Assistant run for its money? But again, every company is now, as I said, like there is nothing else for them to actually show off now. So now they are they're, tr they're experimenting on the software front. Right. So now everyone is coming with the voice ad assistant because that's a new cool thing in the market. Apple came up with Siri, Google came up with Google Assistant for that matter. No, it was Samsung's turn, of course. It's one by one always. So now they come, come up, they came up with Bixby, Samsung's voice assistant. But how well it performs, and I'm sure it's gonna be very fun because people are going to post that the weird questions that they're gonna ask Bixby for that matter. Do you like Siri? If, if it says yes, then it's going to be another joke right, right, for yeah. Samsung. So yeah. let's see how it performs. We are yet to right. test it. So we'll see you know, how things uh, pan out uh, for Samsung, especially you know, will the S8 and the S8 Plus actually save uh, the company's fortunes after that Note 7 uh, whole fiasco. Uh, and with that, of course, it's time to wrap up uh, our Samsung Galaxy S8 uh, launch special. Uh, keep watching Vion. More news and updates on the other side. Stay tuned.